Hey guys, I'm Jeff Allen and you're off the grid iron. In today, today's episode, I take a look at my newest book here, Frequent uh, uh, Marsh Near My Trailer on Canada Day, and see what's available for edible wilds. To some people, it looks like a uh, stinking swamp, good for nothing wetland. Other people, look at this as a buffet. So we're going to try to see what's available to eat, and uh, I'm within arm's reach of so many different edible wilds. Let's check them out. Okay, one of the first edible wilds we've come to, and I'm going to be referring to our uh, edible and medicinal plants of Canada, is bulrushes. Now bulrushes are often, that name is often misinterpreted for cattails. These are bulrushes, okay? And they have little seed pods on the end. Now we, we're not going to dig out the, the younger shoots at the bottom or the ribosomes, which are the roots, but this is what our book reads and explains to us. The juicy shoots and lower stalks have been eaten raw as a thirst quenching snack or cooked as a vegetable. The starchy ribosomes are best collected in autumn or early spring. Uh, the ribosomes, the tips, can be eaten raw or roasted like potatoes and added to soups and stews. That sounds good. Dried roots could be crushed to remove their fiber and then ground into a flour supplement for making bread, muffins, and biscuits. Okay. Up at the top, the pollen from the seed pods can be pressed into cakes and baked or mixed with flour to enhance the, the density of a flour mixture. And the seeds can be eaten raw or um, kind of ground up again to make into a crude, crude bread. So that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the other key uses for these is their long, straight uh, texture is they can be easily woven into a basket and then left to dry. I think that will be a, a great use of how I use these ones today. Maybe I harvest a handful and uh, take them back and see what I can make. Those are bulrushes. Let's see what else is here. One of the classic marsh edible wilds and one of the most useful is the common cattail. Now these, uh, many parts of the cattail can be eaten um, from the actual, the kind of the, the pod on the end and down inside the stalk, that core is said to be like, uh, I guess, kind of palm, uh, heart of palm, which I've never even ex seen before. Um, but you take, peel away these layers, these leaf layers, and the core reveals this white, this white, less, uh, you know, this juicy inner piece that's said to be, to, to flavor much like that of asparagus or uh, mild celery. So. see if they're true if they're right well they definitely have the celery part right I think this one is a little too too uh, fibrous very bland kind of a potato starchy flavor and again the roots can be ground up into a uh, a fine mixture. See what else the book has to say here. The shoots, ribosome, rhizomes, and flower spikes of a cattail are all edible, but not all flavorful. The tender inner parts of the young shoots, with the outer leaves removed, have been likened to celery or asparagus. Well, I wasn't too far off there. And are a good raw or steamed or stir-fried. Again, we don't have any this time of year, we don't have any of the green flower spikes uh, on this particular one, but we'll keep our eyes out open uh, for them. And the pollen can be used to a, as a flour substitute to thicken the flour or gravy. Man, it says it can be used for so many things, muffins, biscuits, pancakes, cooking, all these, anything that requires flour. And that is collecting the, the powder, the pollen, by shaking the spike and collecting it perhaps in a bag. Much of the uh, the rhizome or the shoots, the, the root, uh, although it's you know buried in that stinking mud, is, is probably the most um, nutritious. The starch 
collect by peeling and crushing the rhizomes and water, straining it to fibers and washing away the heavy white starch and several changes of water can leave behind a very dense starch mixture, which can be left dry and, uh, and used again as a, as a flour substitute. It goes on to talk about uh, medicinal applications and various other uses, uh, obviously the stalks to be used for uh, various you know, making of baskets and weaving of mats and so on. So that's the cattail and uh, let's see what else is here. These are a classic find in any marsh or wetland and what we're looking at is the, the, the yellow ball there, that little pod, that's called a cow lily. And the seeds of this aquatic plant were very important for uh, many kind of tribes people back in, uh, in their time. The dried capsules were broken down and often windowed to separate the seeds, which were then popped and eaten like popcorn uh, or fried. Dried or fried, <coughs> these popcorn kernels could be also ground into flour. Now the, the rhizome, the root of that plant, again, is although bitter, is uh, can be uh, boiled with sem several water changes and uh, can be, you know, uh, nice tasting. What else does it say here? Again, used in stews and soups, thin slices dried, kind of used for, uh, again, making flour or thickening of soups. So we're going to harvest a couple of those, those balls. Here's some here. So, assuming those are uh, the seeds of the some, the capsules, we're going to open them up and uh, see what's in there. Okay, when you peel the leaves back, super cool capsule there with this almost ball like inside it. And that's all the seeds that we're referring to. So maybe, oh, there's a dragonfly. Maybe it'll, uh, that'll be something we try to take home and dry out some of these and see if we can actually get them to pop like popcorn. That'd be super cool. Let's see what else we can find. All right, these white guys are your water lilies, different than the cow lilies, which are the yellow ones. And the flowers, leaves, and rhizomes of these guys are said to be edible as well. Some actually claim you can eat the flower buds. They can be cooked as a vegetable or pickled or even eaten raw. Let's see if I can get my hands on this one. I just love re referring to this book. So again, we just grabbed some water lilies. See them there. That's the kind of the pre pre open flower pod and that's the open flower. So again, with these guys, the flowers, leaves, rhizomes, and seeds are all edible. Flower buds can be cooked as a vegetable or pickled. The flowers eaten raw, the leaves eaten raw or cooked, used in soups and stews. The rhizome, or the root, boiled or roasted, and the ripe seed cooked or ground into a meal, like a fine like powder and a grain substitute. So again, this book has been awesome. This is just teaching me all these different things. There's the cow lily on the opposite page. Here again, the front cover. And then I'm just looking around and everywhere I look, there's edible wilds. There's over here, over here. All these tall ones in the water are arrowhead or pickerel weed. Again, edible. I see a, a, a wild grapevine hanging there. And again, this is just all self-taught self material. As we pan around to the side here, as we pan around to this side, we see a number of, uh, the, the uh, again, the bulrushes mix, mixed with the cattails. And we've identified the two as being definitely different. I always thought this uh, hanging, weeping material here is like a wild race, but I don't think it is. Again, a variety of the different lilies, all of which are edible, but uh, probably pretty, pretty stinky and dirty to harvest.
There's a little pocket of water right here. I'm going to try to hand fish for some, some fish to see what I can get. I can see little sunfish in there. I haven't come prepared with any fishing rod, but what I did grab was some 10 pound test line. And I made an old tin into a fishing kit. All different odds and ends in here. So I think I'll put something together and see if, see if I can hand, hand line something, throw it in the water and see if I can grab, catch some fish. Hey guys, so I'm going to hold the reel with one hand like this so the line spools off. And on the other hand, I just put a little jig and a little bobber, put a foot above. Let's see what happens. One thing about fishing with a hand line is that when you're uh, there's a little too much movement or motion when you're when you're casting uh, spinning it around casting it out so what I'm going to try to do instead I'm going to harvest the branch up one of these trees and that way I can really reach out and dip it into these little holes these little pockets where some of these fish are hiding that way I don't spook them so the branch harvested offshore I can now take this this small hook and punch it right through my my line and then I can run from there up to the end up here and a quick little half hitch should give me enough there we go and with that half hitch on there if the fish takes it pulls it off the end and I still have control, thumb control of this line back here. Let's get out here and see what I can, what I can reach. Just like that, fish on. Not easy holding the camera. There you go, a little sunfish. Again, this hand fish in 101. There we go, let's see what else we can get. That was so awesome. So again, we're using a 10 pound test. I'm able to use the back of these, uh, of the spool and really pinch grip it in there. And then when I throw, the line comes right off the spool like this. So that was actually what I was able to do. Now the trick is to get it wound back up without Getting a line too awfully tied up. But that was so cool, it actually worked. And I was able to almost cast the spool by pinching this back, back side of the spool, spinning it and throwing it and pointing the spool face in the direction I wanted to throw. Let's see if I can do it again. This actually worked a little better than the stick, to be honest with you. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to point the spool face in the direction I want to throw and with a little kind of lasso kind of toss. And that toss stayed there probably 14 feet. And with the bobber, now I watch and, and, and spool, reel it in slow. Give it a little. Oh, oh, I saw a bite. The bobber is the bomb, just allows that. That visual, when you're already got both hands doing something. Okay, we're going to pull up the anchor and float in here, see if we can get into a quiet pocket. So the foraging was a hit and the hand fishing proved successful. I think before, uh, before we leave, let's, uh, I'm going to harvest some of these bulrushes to 
to uh, take back to see if I can do some uh, kind of primitive weaving into a into a crude basket. It'd certainly be nice to put all my fish in there so they're not flopping around the boat. I'm gonna go up into this little pocket and try some more hand fishing again. I love this little cove, this little marshland here. It always produces some element of kind of interesting stuff. Sure enough, <laughs> what I find was an old Rapella had blown in here. Probably a big pike or something. There's a missing a missing a barb there, and uh, finally spit it out and got free. You never know what you're gonna find. Let's try our luck at fishing again. Okay, I got my second one. Let's see if I can spin the camera and you can watch me bring it in. Okay, so here's the hand line. There's the bobber. And come on, fish. Oh no. Too much playing around with the camera. Came free. Let's see if I can get it back in there. Okay, not this time. I just don't want to drop my camera in the lake. Oh, another sunfish. Sunfish number two. Nice little meal. Just get them off and get it back in there. So I've been fishing for about half an hour. And I've caught seven. Seven sunfish. And that's almost every cast. So I just want to show you. Oh, I just missed one. I found a little hole here that's totally producing. Every time you bring it in, you just clean off the uh, any of the, the foliage. Make sure your jig's back on again. And all I'm going to do is just toss it out. Make sure the string is clear. And I grab above the bobber and then pitch it out there. As it sinks, that's when you get... Oh, I lost it again. That's when you get the hit. I think it's. It thinks it feels like something's dropped in the water, wounded maybe, an insect. Okay, here we go. This one for sure. Man, I missed again. Must be some really little ones there. Can't really take the whole jig in its mouth. Oh man, it's almost a sure thing every time it hits the water. As soon as I turn the camera on, it's obviously this is the uh, this is the result. A couple more tosses here. Here we go. Here we go. Let it go. Oh no. With their little mouth, those little sharp, they got little sharp teeth and they're they're <clears throat> slowly making quick work of the, the little strings on the back of my jig. May not be producing quite a bit. You can see they chewed them all off. There's all but one or two left, which doesn't make it near as effective as it was. So I'll give a few more casts here. I want to catch one live for you guys again. Oh man, just take it in your mouth. Oh, we got one. It's a small one. There you go. I just didn't want you thinking I was catching the same one over and over again. This guy's pretty small. We're going to put this one back. Now, the smaller ones could be really good to use as bait. Um, different parts of the uh, the uh, the fish can be used and put on hooks, but with art, these artificial jigs, oh again, come on, take a bite. These uh, they do they do seem to like them just fine. Man, there's some in a pocket of little ones here. They're just not taking it. Try a little different spot.
it's the bobber is just the best way to keep that that jig in suspension just at the right height. Now, if you don't have a bobber, a bobber you can always use uh, an acorn, pine cone, little piece of wood. Any plant matter that's going to float would be uh, sufficient. Got another one. There you go. This one's a little better. All right, hand lining for sunfish. Now I have to show you guys how to prepare them. I think that's about it. Let's home, head home and let up the Barbie. So once you're done, you take your line, wrap it around and around on the, the spool. And now this is a perfect, perfect size. I take my elastic, my wide, you know, broccoli elastic off a of broccoli uh, bunch and uh, just put it on there. See if I can do it. So just take that broccoli elastic, put it around there. And because of the raised edges of the spool, it keeps that, uh, you can throw that right in a pocket. And there's no worry about getting hooks all caught on anything. Just put it, I can drop it right back in my vest. Just like that. It's all ready to go until next time. All right, let's paddle out of here. And here's another one. It came to a different spot, and this time it's a perch. Just like I can prove I'm not catching the same sunfish over and over showing it. This one's all pretty spotted up. Lots of the little spots on the underside of the belly. Probably not a deal breaker, but uh, for this guy this size, don't need him. Hi guys, thanks for joining me today on Canada Day. Quick little tour of the marsh. We looked over some edible wilds. We had a look at my one of my newest books that I'm trying to learn, Edible and Medicinal Plants of Canada. Worked really well today uh, to, to highlight some of those, so those uh, uh, native species that are edible in these marshlands and wetlands. Uh, I wanted to introduce you to the hand reel and we had success. I've got seven of the sunfish uh, that we're gonna take back and put on the barbecue and uh, have those for dinner. Uh, I've got again a bunch of cattails and, and uh, bulrushes rather. We're going to take those and weave them into a basket and see what I can produce. And uh, again, keep your eyes open all the time. I found that one fishing lure here and uh, another little piece of metal on the bottom of the lake that I could be repurposed into a, maybe a, a scraper of some nature. So as always, click like, share and subscribe. Uh, up top is a different links to other videos that I've had, many related to bushcraft, to bushcraft and primitive skills. Down below is my link, uh, so uh, you can click on that and follow my channel. I uh, primarily look to cover bushcraft, camping, primitive skills uh, in, in, in all the different forms that I know. So again, till next time, it's Jeff Allen off the gridiron. Thanks for joining me. Enjoy the outdoors.